I'm a cosmologist. I was asked uh, to talk about Apollo 8, so I'm not going to talk about cosmology today. The moon was first seen with a telescope. Thank you for the technological support. <laughs> During the winter 1609-1610, Galileo was the first human being pardon, to, to, to observe the moon through a telescope and he made his uh, beautiful design with craters, with uh, uh, what we call also uh, seas. We know nowadays that this is an abuse of language and there is absolutely no water, at least not in a, a quantity uh, able to do seas. And uh, we have mountains, we have craters, we have these pseudo uh, seas on the surface of the moon, which has constantly, for probably the most remote time of uh, humankind, they have fascinated uh, human beings. And uh, you have here a few pictures uh, which I found uh, like this balloon here or uh, going up the ladder and so on. Since the origin of uh, man, the moon has always been fascinating, being emblematic of an unreachable world. And consequently, it is the quintessence of unreasonable design. And this is the, uh, the subject of this talk. Three and a half centuries after Galileo, there was already uh, enormous technology progress. It has even been increased uh, a few folds uh, since uh, the 60s. In uh, uh, 1957, there was the launch by USSR of uh, Sputnik 1. In uh, uh, 61, the launch of the first man in uh, space, Yuri Gagarin. And many of the Americans perceived that the USSA, the USA, sorry, uh, were losing the space race uh, with the USSR, Russia today. So the Apollo program was started only in '60. During the end of the second Eisenhower administration, which was considered the Apollo program as a possible follow-up for the two Mercury and Gemini uh, programs and I'm not say anything more about these two programs. Apollo was uh, the god of uh, solar clarity, of reason, of music and poetry, so it was a reasonable uh, name, a reasonable god to invoke in order to have a successful Apollo program. And it is on September uh, 16, here, 19, uh, September 12, 1962, at Rice University in Texas, in Houston, that John F. Kennedy delivered one of the few speeches he delivered at that time in order to persuade Americans to uh, support, to endorse the Apollo program. So it was not uh, invented this Apollo program by Kennedy, but it, it really uh, put it on the stage. And Apollo program was uh, uh, central with the uh, Saturn V uh, uh, rocket. You see here the moon. I first thought that it would be uh, a kind of hole in the picture, but not at all. It is the moon. And uh, the rocket was absolutely enormous. It has never been uh, uh, beaten so far. Uh, the height was 111 meters. The diameter, 10 meters. The mass, something like 3,000 tons. And uh, three stages, as you've seen uh, here with a paper copy of the Saturn V. And the payload was interesting. If you were interested to go into a uh, low Earth orbit, you could satellite something like 150 tons. If you want to go to the moon, you have to have some uh, further push, so you would uh, uh, get only 49 tons uh, to the moon, which was uh, exactly what was uh, uh, combined with uh, the spacecraft, the rocket, and so on. 
and you had to put it into the TLI, which we saw already uh, a few minutes ago, the translunar injection. When you satellite your uh, um, spacecraft around the Earth in low Earth orbit, you have at one moment to give a kick in order to accelerate and go to the moon. And as you have seen, and you can also guess through your basic physics lesson, we don't go to the moon in a straight line, but along orbits, along uh, ellipses, along uh, parabola or hyperbola. Fortunately, uh, it was never an hyperbola, and you guess why. So the, uh, uh, the uh, Saturn V was absolutely enormous. And here you have the size, actually, from the bottom to the top of the spire of the Lodan uh, Cathedral. And you see how enormous it is. Another uh, proof of the enormity of the uh, uh, Saturn V is this uh, spare copy, uh, which is, I think, at Johnson Space Center, but there is a few one. Uh, if you go to Kennedy Space Center, you see also another one. You see the, the diameter of each of these uh, uh, engine was absolutely uh, uh, enormous. So. It started in the 60s. There were quite a lot of uh, action. And in 67, you see that Apollo first was, Apollo 1 was uh, kind of the major accident of the Apollo program. It started very badly. They recovered uh, through Apollo 4 to 7. Uh, for whatever reason, there was never any Apollo 2 and 3. And Apollo 1, uh, Apollo 8 is uh, the one we are uh, interested in uh, today with Bowman, uh, Lovell, and uh, Anders. And uh, these three guys were the first to go around the moon. Here's the takeoff of uh, Apollo 8 on uh, 21st of December, 68. And uh, um, you saw already this picture uh, uh, tonight. Um, you had to uh, go into a low Earth orbit, then to have the uh, translunar injection, go over there, so this is highly, uh, you see, for example, um, if you take the Earth here, and the Moon is these things uh, here, you should go to something like 32 times the diameter of this uh, uh, Earth here. So it would be really way out of the room at about uh, uh, 10, 20 meters from uh, here. So it is distant but not so distant and you can go in three uh, days or so you have uh, all the uh, uh, succession of the uh, uh, important steps going around the, uh, the moon uh, circling around the moon and these guys actually were the first one as it has been already said to uh, go from the uh, earth gravitational field into the um, uh, lunar gravitational field and this is illustrated here by the two, uh, the five Lagrangian points, L1, L2, and 3 which were saddle unstable points, and the L4 and 5 which are uh, stable points. And uh, the uh, satellites, now like Planck satellite, the future JWST, uh, James Webb Space Telescope, they will go to uh, L uh, point, L2 or L4. Uh, so they were the first human being trapped into another gravitational field and had they had any kind of slightest problem they would still circling the, the, the moon uh, there is no atmosphere so they would survive a very long time fortunately that was not uh, the case and uh, Apollo uh, 8 crew were the first men to escape the gravitational field of the Earth for the time they were over there. And they must have been very uh, emotional also because it was around Christmas 68. I was 18 at that time. And um, it was a time when the atmosphere about science was completely different from nowadays. We were really thinking of a very fast astronautic development and this was also illustrated by a famous movie, 2001, which was for the first time projected in November or December of uh, that year. And this is certainly, for me, one of the most beautiful uh, movie ever shot. 
It is uh, a piece of uh, uh, science, a piece of uh, art, a piece of uh, 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 philosophy, in a way, with uh, fantastic images uh, here at the end, with uh, this famous alignment with uh, Also Sprach Zarathustra, music of uh, Richard Strauss. This was really an atmosphere which we never thought um, it would disappear and it evaporated completely a few years ago and uh, a few years later, you'll see why. And there was this famous picture of um, the, the earth from the, the moon uh, taken by Anders and there was a, a beautiful um, uh, postal stamp uh, and it is not really related to religion. In the beginning, God, you can believe or not about God, about uh, uh, miracles and so on, but it was a kind of a first opportunity for human being to feel together very small on this pale blue dot, and as uh, Sagan had said. Then there was Apollo 11 on, uh, in July 69, um, you, you see the succession was quite clever and each Apollo had a new feature to test and so on. They uh, went around the moon but then they, they were circling the earth only in order to uh, test everything uh, uh, close to, to the earth. And then there was Apollo 11 with this famous picture of um, uh, Aldrin photographed by Armstrong. Apparently, uh, they never really realized that they were never taking any picture of Armstrong on the moon. So the only picture uh, of Armstrong on the moon was taken by Armstrong through the reflection on uh, the helmet of uh, Aldrin. This is the uh, lunar module coming back to uh, the uh, command module around the, um, uh, the, the loo, the loo, and there was another postal stamp, far uh, mediocre, I would say, than the previous one, with this kind of technology, uh, blah, blah, it was uh, not so uh, emotional. When you look at this one and uh, this one, I think there is no... Uh, uh, no doubt about the talent of the, of the drawing. The Apollo 13 was very, very close to a big catastrophe. They had the explosion of an oxygen tank, fortunately on the way to the moon, so they couldn't stop and uh, come back immediately. They had to go to the moon, but they benefited from the oxygen of... Uh, from the oxygen they had at the departure of the, of the mission. Had they had this uh, um, accident coming back, they would have been probably lacking of oxygen and the things would have been probably a, a disaster. Anyway, then there was 14, 15, 16, 17. I call to mind the fact that uh, Apollo, 12, Apollo 11, they stayed less than a day on, uh, on the moon. Uh, they took uh, one hundred uh, two kilograms, and Apollo 17, they took 110 kilograms, and they said three days on the moon. So uh, there was a, a much re more relaxed e explore exploration with actually uh, the first uh, jeep uh, uh, on, uh, on the moon. And you have here, um, I don't know what kind of uh, uh, astronaut it was. So after uh, six Apollo flight, you had 12 men who had been walking on uh, the moon in these various uh, um, uh, spots here. And then you have the spot where you had lunar uh, crash or, or landing and uh, uh, survoyers also. One of the Apollo uh, were checking, uh, the, uh, was checking the, the site of a, a previous American uh, uh, spacecraft. 68 was a great year for astronautics, but as it was already said, there were quite a lot of problems uh, in our society already, with uh, um, riots in Washington, it was quite serious. Uh, you have here 7th Street and O Street, so the White House is somewhere uh, uh, after the uh, at the top of the uh, image, the, and I remember the first time I went to the United States 
in the uh, late 70s, there were still quite a lot of these rooms and areas you couldn't walk really safely and so on. This has essentially dis disappeared. It has been reconstructed, but it was really some serious problem. The United States had also other problems. They were sending their young American uh, um, uh, boys uh, holidaying in Vietnam uh, for the benefit of uh, nobody on earth uh, with uh, uh, really um, the, the distra distraction of civilian, of children and so on. These are famous images, unfortunately, which help stopping the war, actually, when uh, people realize what their boys were doing in, the United States, in, uh, in, in Vietnam. And uh, so, I would like to talk briefly about the cost of these programs. The Apollo program uh, costed something like $25 billion. And uh, the Vietnam War, $75 billion. The Iraq and Afghanistan War, much more. There's probably some slight differences in the value of the dollar between uh, the 60s and uh, the year 2000. And the International Space Station, $150 billion. So we see that, unfortunately, our humanity is uh, devoting much more to war than to build uh, interesting things. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that research and space exploration are significantly cheaper and less harmful than wars. So let's go back to the moon. We haven't been over there for ages. Let's go to Mars, uh, maybe uh, robotically first, uh, and then uh, in, uh, 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 with human being. And uh, we just have the two big interrogation mark. Will humanity be wise enough to survive its pollution crisis and uh, counter ignorance in promoting science. Uh, you see that all over the world, not only in the United States, we have nowadays governments which are completely anti-science and uh, they are ignoring uh, the problem of uh, pollution, climate change and so on. And we may wonder if uh, we can survive all these uh, uh, crises of uh, ignorance. And I'll put this image, which is not the one I, I showed before, but it is a much newer one with a higher quality uh, of uh, lunar reconnaissance orbiter, which was taken in 2015. And let's hope that we are not going to screw up completely our pale blue, job, uh, blue dot. Thank you very much. Actually, before asking questions, I have a question for you. Um, I was born in 98, so I don't have any <laughs> memories of the Apollo program. And I was wondering which memory is the, well, the most impressive or dominant about the Apollo program when we were young. Well, it, it was a series of very important uh, impressions. Um, Apollo 8 was very important. They were the first guys cruising around uh, the moon. Apollo 11, of course, was very important. Afterwards, there was a kind of a, of a repeat atmosphere. And I remember that uh, everybody was uh, in front of uh, his or her television set for Apollo 11. 12, 13, 14, it was a kind of decrease of audience which uh, afterwards uh, was completely, uh, essentially, nobody nowadays would like to, to watch, uh, to, to watch uh, uh, a launch of spacecraft. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it has been a completely change of atmosphere. And as I said uh, before, we had all in 68, when the 2001 uh, Space Odyssey movie was uh, presented to the public, we had the impression that in the year 2000, we would go for coffee to the moon uh, sometime and uh, have a... It, it was a, a very naive uh, uh, belief and uh, we had to face reality of some bad decision. You know nowadays that uh, there's nobody able today, tonight, to go to uh, the ISS in order to uh, take uh, uh, some food to the, the three guys who are over there. Um, for years, it is only the Russian who are able to service uh, the ISSI. We have now, uh, thanks to Elon Musk and uh, uh, SpaceX, we have 
uh, some uh, new rockets going to the uh, International Space Station. But there is a kind of, not disorganization, but a, a kind of a, a low, um, a low, um, um, what, uh, I'm trying to find a, a right word. There, there is not an urgency for human being to do clever things. They, they are just uh, <laughs> spoiling uh, everything with uh, plastic all over the world. And people are throwing plastic everywhere for 50 years. And for now a few months, a few years, they are surprised to see oceans of plastic all over the world. So, you know, can't you uh, think a bit in advance uh, about the consequences of your actions? So, uh, anyway, so um, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> so, do you have uh, any question here? I don't know if you can put the light up. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, nice. Uh, I have a question for Jean-Claude. Uh, I think you mentioned that you have a 